When you think about the strongest province in Europa Universalis 4, you would imagine that would be something like Paris, London, Constantinople, Rome, or even Ulm, but you'd be wrong. None of those provinces can be even slightly close to the strength that this one province has. I'm talking about the province of Riga and as consequence the Archbishopric of Riga, which existed between 1186 and 1563. The Archbishopric of Riga actually had more land than what is shown in uh, Europa Universalis 4, albeit it did control at various times more or less as uh, borders change. It did have a massive swathe over the Livonian order and as consequence the Teutonic order with the Archbishopric of Riga holding immense wealth as time progressed until its downfall. In Europa Universalis 4, Riga is an 11 development Balton Catholic province, Balton being a newly added uh, culture a part of the Germanic culture group, the Balton Germans having been uh, the wealthiest class of citizens throughout the Baltic area up until the end of the uh, Second World War when most of the Baltons were deported or, or something else happened to them which wasn't as nice as, deport as being deported, that's for sure. The point is that today we're going to be navigating Riga, we're going to be staying as a one province minor and we're going to be playing tall as Riga, but don't let that fool you because Riga has has an ace up its sleeve in the shape of its mission tree. Whilst the mission tree is not very big, it does present some insane missions like Develop Our City, which offers the city of Riga 11 development, thus doubling its development, as well as it offers dev cost reduction minus 25%, yearly tax income plus 60 flat, not 60%, 60 flat ducats, bro. Province governing cost reduction, a loyalty equilibrium for the clergy, trade power goods produced plus three which is the equivalent to 15 production development naval force limit plus 20 flat manpower plus 6,000 land force limit plus 20 flat defensiveness plus 50 fort maintenance minus 90% which essentially means you get basically free fortifications because whatever the case you you always have to pay 10% of the fort worth even if it says minus 100% uh, fort uh, maintenance cost you still pay 10% it caps out at minus 90% as well as a lot of uh, loyalty equilibrium for the estate. There's more missions here that we're going to be navigating through that are absolutely insane. There are a few conditions though. You have to stay smaller than six provinces, meaning you can have up to five maximum provinces on the European continent. So by that logic, if we wanted to go outside of Europe, we could still have a massive empire outside of Europe as long as we don't have more than five provinces in Europe. So we could say, hop on over, get the province of Gotland, get the province of Lübeck, get the province province of uh, Zeeland or Amsterdam and then get one of these provinces here and just uh, start colonizing the new world if that's what we want to do eventually, right? There's a lot of opportunities as Riga and the reality is that this is a hidden gem. This mission tree was added in the Lions of the North DLC like one plus years ago and I don't see that many people using Riga as much as they should be using it because Riga is an extremely fun nation, especially if you enjoy a little bit of playing toll. Now guys, before we do anything, when it comes to the estates, it's really important that you do not not give out the plus one mana privilege estate uh, privileges from the beginning since we do need to do the uh, city against the state mission and it requires that we have 30% groundlands as well as loyalty for the burgers or better yet influence for the burgers below 50 and one stability so if you give this out it's going to take significantly longer we want to do it as soon as possible so then after we get these juicy benefits of dev cost reduction a cathedral in Riga manpower tax modifier production efficiency so when you mix all of those permanent modifiers for the province with these permanent modifiers for the province it's just absolutely insane how much we're gonna make out of this one little schnapple dupe land so that means we're gonna give out right now for the uh, estates only religious diplomats clerical education increased levies with uh, grand court positions and that's it no other privileges for now we're gonna give a lot more privileges after we do that one mission so we can also summon the diet here and we're gonna go for whichever one of these is actually most beneficial to us. I would say actually that burger one is not too bad. Seven production development. Sure, why not? Then we can seize the crownlands right afterwards. We just need to seize crownlands one more time and get one stability and then we can do that one mission. So basically in five years we can do it. There's gonna be a lot of uh, waiting around in this run so keep that in mind. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep you entertained with some nice historical facts as we progress in this video. Rival wise, you can only get the Livonians at the start and we're gonna be in 
improving relations with the Austrians and with Lubeck. Since remember, we need to do contact with the Emperor that requires 75 relations with the Austrians and 150 relations with Lubeck. So we also need to get a trader over here. We're going to change the one from uh, Krakow to um, to the Lubeck node. Sadly, we only have 6% of the Baltic node and 2% of the Novgorod node. So we don't really have much of a trade power going around. We're going to sign the two starting trade ships to the Baltic node. And we're going to be selling off most of our ships here, especially the galleys a lot of uh, nations will be interested in. Uh, did I just separate my uh, light ships? Yes, we. I, I'm just small brain sometimes. All right, once more, protect Baltic. Thank you. We also need some allies. And let's see who that would be for now. Uh, Stetten would be really happy to ally us, apparently. How about the Poles? 1150, no shot for that one. Brandenburg would be pretty easy to ally as well. How about we send their rivals a scornful insult? That would be Brunswick. So they're farther away from me. Less chance of them getting angry or with me as consequence. 4041. So we just need to improve relations with them a little bit more. And then we've got it done. Now let's also select our air. We have a few options here. Depending on the option we go for, we get different mana points for our airs. As well as we might get some bonuses like prestige if we go for the local noble. Ducats if we go for the merchant. Obviously, right? Merchant ducats make sense. Theologian gives a devotion. Preacher gives devotion as well and papal protege gives papal influence alongside 15% uh, loyalty for the uh, clergy but take note this one is going to be a different culture for the uh, for the heir rather than our Balton culture I am going to go for the papal pro protege because we want that extra loyal extra influence so we can uh, eventually get some of these bonuses from the holy see like the diplo reputation the construction cost and national tax modifier the morale of armies bonus and so many of these are just absolutely delicious we also cannot afford any uh, advisor for the starting bit and we're going to be lowering our maintenance for the army we're going to also be recruiting two more units we want to do this mission raise riga's defenses we need to have a hundred percent land force limit and one general and then we're going to get subjugation cb on livonians and the teutons i'm not going to click that instantly though because i want to wait for a while remember that in order for us to do this mission here we need to have less than five cities so what's likely going to happen is i'm going to to uh, keep Riga and maybe as we progress I'm gonna get Gotland, Lubeck, Zeeland and so on so I can work my way towards the new world. It has to be less than six cities in Europe so outside of Europe I can have as many cities as possible meaning I can start an actual colonial empire but for this run as I promised we're gonna stay just as the city of Riga develop the schnapps out of this and just play it insanely. To we're gonna be skyscraper pole right here which brings me to the fact that if we get 6,900 likes i'm gonna get a new video for the teutonic order where we unify germany before the 1480s in just a few years and we're gonna form the german empire very early in that particular time frame as the teutons because of their amazing mission tree that they also got in the lions of the north dlc together with the regans they got it at the same time their deal their mission trees so that's like more than a year ago I, I guess at this point despite these being old mission trees they are amazing mission trees some of my favorite mission trees have been released in the lions of the north dlc personally and hey if you enjoyed the content don't forget to subscribe i wanted to get to 190,000 subs by the end of the year which is pretty much around the corner so kind of losing hope on it but i still I'm, I'm still gonna ask for it right all right so after improving a couple of months with uh with the brandenburg we can get that alliance so we have our very first ally now let's also sell off the ships that we have we have a lot of galleys we want to send off and uh, even cogs that we want to send off we don't need the ships and it's good money early on when we're really lacking finances right so we're going to supplement our finances with these uh, galleys being sold around i think these guys might actually want a uh, cog so let's give them a cog if that's what they want what they really really want i wanna i wanna i wanna cog a cog a cog a gotland cog remember when this province in zemitija used to have a connection to the sea those were the good times weren't they selling all of these ships has the added benefit of um now we have a lot more land force limit or better yet naval force limit so we can replace all of these ships that we've sold with light ships we need to get as much trade power as possible that's our main uh, problem we don't have enough trade power right now nobody wants to buy the galleys really what about these guys wow literally nobody wants to buy the galleys how the hell nobody wants these oh looks like i'm stuck with a few galleys if that's the case then let's try and guns for some more allies so i would love to get lubeck as an ally that's gonna help me do my mission a little bit faster but they don't want to ally me just yet Br hamburg on the other hand might ally me so i'm gonna improve relations with them and same goes for volgast but volgast might get attacked by brandenburg luckily for them though they allied burgundy so the chances of uh, brandenburg attacking them now is basically zero what are my chances of allying them 13 with minus 30 that's actually pretty decent we can probably get that 
Alliance. After we get the one stability and we do this mission, we're going to give out the uh, minus 10% uh, advisor cost reductions privileges as soon as we get the advisors. Obviously, we don't want to give the privilege out if we don't have any advisors. That would be just nonsensical, would it? Oh, Neapolitan succession happened. That was so freaking fast. And the successor for Vratislav. So did they get the union? I'm assuming so. Yep, they did get it. Can I actually ally them? Minus 1370. Not a single shot that, that that would ever happen. Holy shit. They really hate. How about Muscovy? Sometimes Muscovy is on the good side of them, but not today, apparently. Sometimes RG give it, RNG take it away. It do be like that, boys. All right, we got one Stabilitat and just need the crown lens left now. So gotta wait a little while. We do have contact with the Emperor though. So now we can either join the Empire or we can stay out of the Empire and get 10 prestige. I'm gonna join the Empire because now I have the protection of the Emperor. So even if, let's say, Riga borders the Muscovites because Muscovy fully annexes Livonian order, which happens most of the times, by the way, um, I'm still gonna be safe because they're not gonna attack me since they have to fight the Emperor, which is Austria right now. So they're pretty strong. Now we can stop improving with the Emperor. We can start improving, on the other hand, with the, uh, the Papal States. We can do another mission by getting some relations with the Pope. A lot of the early on missions revolve around just getting relations, really. And yes, we did become a uh, bishopric because we joined the HRE. Remember that an archbishopric is the equivalent of a kingdom rank. Bishopric is the equivalent of a duchy rank. And joining the HRE means that only electors can be kingdom ranks and only the emperor can be emperor rank to signify the uh, social strata of the Holy Roman Empire, which was essentially, you know, you go from county, duchy, kingdom, empire. That's why it do be the way it is right now. That means we have one one less um, diplomats because we're not a kingdom anymore and that kind of sucks bowls but it do be like that unfortunately let's uh bring this guy back from lubeck so we can get the alliance with bremen or uh, hamburg better yet and then we can continue to improve with uh, lubeck right afterwards let's also get a general so we can be able to do the mission we're not doing it yet we're waiting we're holding our ground until the right opportunity arrives because right now attacking uh, both the livonians and the teutons would be absolute suicide but we both know that the teutons are going to get raffle stomped by the poles eventually and when that happens that's our you to be just like uh, yo brothers from the baltic uh, avec le all of us germans why don't we just make you our little schnapple dupe hey <laughs> That's right there, historical discourse, in case you're wondering. Okay, another thing here is that we need to get 15 development in Riga. So let's go ahead and set up the Encourage Development Edict. And let's just develop the schnapps out of this province. We got one of our missions done as well. So we have 15 development. We have one Stabilitat. And we're just missing those juicy crownlands. And whilst we uh, have that extra naval force limit, let's queue up four light ships. And then more whenever we can afford them. I'm also going to be using one of the most uh, underused features in Europa Universal for essentially the expand infrastructure button here offers us construction cost reduction as well as time reduction development cost minus 15 percent trade power increase production goods produced tax modifier defensiveness number of buildings and manufactories that we can have here so we can have two manufacturers at the same time in this one province great project upgrade costs and so on for just 50 admin points it is a no-brainer i'm gonna do this but not now i'm gonna do it before i develop afterwards and before and after I get uh, Admin Tech 5, because I need Admin Tech 5 to do another one of my missions. So after Admin Tech 5 is when we start to properly snowball and develop our country. Okay, boys, we got 150 relations with Lubeck, which means we got 50 Diplo Power and, trade and 20 flat trade power in Lubeck. So now we're going to be collecting more than just 0% of here. We're going to collect... Um, that's still zero, isn't it? Yep, we're gonna collect zero, boys. Let's actually protect the Lubeck node. Maybe that's gonna give us 1%. Can we get 1%, please? Yes! Yay! We got 1%, guys. We got we got 1%. We're so good right now. It's insane. Cannot believe how much we're making. We're making probably 0 0.001 or something. <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting to get more than zero there, I'll be honest. Okay, next up, we need to get 10% or more trade power in the Baltic node, which is actually fairly easy to do. We just need to wait for our light ships to finish building. And that's going to give us some ducats. If the mission trade presence in Lubeck and Papal Embassy are completed, then the event religion as a business will fire. We want that to fire. So we got to do trade presence in Lubeck, meaning we need to have three or more percent of the trade node here. That means just basically light ships. And Mercantilism is 12. Right now, it's uh, 10. So we're going to 
boost that up once. Boy, I wish I had the uh, monopolies now. I don't have monopolies, so I cannot do it for monopolies. I'll wait it out for this, though, because I need my uh, diplo points first to get technology before anything else. Because if we get technology a little bit ahead of time as well, we do have the extra 20% trade power that we can make use of, right? I said trade and I hover over taxation. I'm just special. Shut up, all right? This all kind of falls into play because once we do the city against the state, we can do the papal embassy mission. And once we get the light ships done, we can do the trade presence in Lubeck so we can do compete with the Swede with a better outcome. That's going to lead us down to the cell of indulgence, which until the end of the game gives papal influence and clergy equilibrium. So that is actually pretty freaking juicy because it is a permanent modifier. After seriously improving relations more, we did manage to get our alliance with Lubeck, which is pretty good because Lubeck is a decently strong nation and it has uh, it's got the leadership of the Hanseatic League as well. And we're back to November, boys, meaning we can get another 5% crownlands. Uh, I could summon the diet. It's not going to make any difference. We're still going to have a rebellion, so we might as well just fight them off. Now that that's done, we get the uh, city against the state mission, Boom Shakalokos. Now that offered us in the city of Riga a huge amount of stuff, as I explained before. And we can do the papal embassy because it offered us some papal influence and we have the cathedral in Riga. So cathedral is the level 19 building, which is a huge buff right there, boyos. Now we just need to do trade presence in Lubeck, so we need to have two more mercantilism, which we're going to do afterwards in a while, not just yet. And um, that's also going to let us do the uh, competition with the Swedes, obviously. We need to still build a few more ships, no? Um, and I think I can get some bigger loans if I improve my province a little bit more as well. So I think I'm going to do that. It really is a lot of waiting in the start of this campaign, isn't it? Okay, let's see. Burgers want me to improve. Yeah, sure. We can do that. We can definitely do that. And we got a war against... Wait, what? We got what CB now? I didn't what oh okay i see we got the war against heretics gas's belly against the muscovites wow 75 percent aggressive expansion same goes for novgorod we can attack them with this uh cb and they only have six thousand units wait what uh i don't need anything from novgorod but i could take some stuff from them like some money and stuff and i could use that yeah you know what man maybe i should do it maybe i should actually do that yeah let's let's start a little bit of a war against novgorod the city that could essentially is what we are here boys can we get a military access for these guys and these guys we can these guys are our rivals but we are not their rival and they're giving us military act that is so weird okay boys war against the heretic Tixum in uh, Novgorod. Let's get the military access through all of these Chad Lords here. Can I not get it through Muscovy anymore? What? Why? Why is their opinion of me bad? I'm going to improve my relations with them then. Yeah, we got to be real careful here. If we walk into the Catholic Zealots, we lose all of our troops. So that is not something we like to do, obviously. To improve relations with these guys as well here. And it seems like now we can get uh, that uh, Juse Militare Oxis. We are in the German land. <laughs> What? In German land? A? A? Clearly, this is meant to be our province because it's in German land. Okay, shut up. You'll be quiet right now. All right, this uh, is not too bad. We could technically take this and we'd still be below five provinces, right? So maybe we could do it. Let's, mostly what I'm going to take from uh, Novgorod, though, is uh, the money. We can have 165 ducats and some war reps. And some, some cores don't really care about that too much. Rivalries don't care about either. Release these nations. Do I want to do that? Would that just be a little bit of a nuisance more than anything else for the for the Muscovites? No, actually. The Muscovites could attack these after, couldn't they? Yeah, they could. So, no, I'm not going to do that. Hold on a second. You tell me I got 53% war score. So, I could actually get what I want, including the province, the war reps, and um, the money without having to even take their capital i mean that is literally a no-brainer boys that is legitimately a freaking no-brainer so let's go back home now Alrighty, i'm gonna keep this temporarily because i might just release novgorod when muscovy completely wipes out novgorod novgorod so i can uh feed him back horse and have a very massive a vassal if i wanted to that's an option on my table right there plus this also gives me a tiny little bit of trade power 11 trade power and of course this is going to go up after we make it a full proper state in uh in the novgorod node so we go up to four percent now all right by just doing Doing that we got a lot of money we paid off our one loan and we can get 12 ducats in loans now most importantly we can do compete with the swedes which gives us significantly more money now as consequence so we could technically do this couldn't we we have six ships there how much trade power is that that's two percent we just need three percent trade power uh i also did leave the um the trade league because i don't care about the trade league too much and i'm gonna have to cancel this once my troops are back home so i can get a fourth ally way better than uh, just getting military access with them right now what else can i do 
here. We need, to, you know what? I, I was going to wait. I was definitely going to wait, but I'm just going to go to Mercantilism. I need to do this mission quick. I need to do it really quick. Let's get some more ships so we can get that 3%. Maybe if we get a general and add, how is that going to, that, that enough? Come on, man. Just a little bit more, bro. Oh, wait, wait, get that freaking trader out of there, bro. That trader is the reason I have, uh, yeah, that trader. No, no, wrong one. Now with the trader out of there, we should get more than that. There you go, boy. There you go, baby. Okay, now we got uh, three more candles from that as well. And we can do compete with the switch, which which gives us the event religion as a business. Now this allows us to get the blessed plutocracy government reform. We would not have been able to do this without having done the papal embassy and the trade presence in Lubeck beforehand. So if you're following along with this video, keep that in mind. That is extremely important information right there. You always have the option of just getting one stability and not getting the reform. But I, of course, recommend you do get the reform. So we change over from the clerical state to the blessed plutocracy that allows us to place trade posts, create trade leagues, create trade cities, gives us one extra merchant, papal influence plus two, and it costs governing capacity modifier, which doesn't matter because, you know, we're going to stay small anyway, so governing capacity is not going to be too relevant. There you go, boys. This is one of the best government reforms you can have in the early part of the campaign, and we just got it. It also gives us access to the factions, which can give up to 5% uh, morale of armies or trade power or construction cost and goods produced. Obviously, this is by far the best one, just saying. At least in our current situation, it is. Now, we can also get this to level two since we have the ducats lying around. And we can do sell of indulgence has sold at least five indulgence through the sell indulgence diplomatic action. What does that mean? Well, because we are now the blessed plutocracy, we have the ability to sell indulgence, which is in the economic actions tab. And it requires at least 50 papal influence. That's why we want to keep improving with the Pope and even if possible, get an alliance with the Pope. That would be awesome. Okay, not just yet, but we'll work our way towards there eventually. A lot of people would love to get our indulgence but uh the problem is that um we we don't have the papal influence so i gotta wait for that first support independence geneva don't care dissolve the alliance no uh invite to trade league brandenburg hamburg lubeck yeah but you guys are not one province miners are you tell you and halt and bremen would you oh oh okay i see what's up we could get bremen in our alliance if we improve with them let's do that now we also have access to mr cedric baldiris which is and basically free advisor 75 percent cheaper so we can level this guy up to level three and it would only cost 1.9 which is basically our income so it costs us nothing we are on zero but it's fine because we're getting three extra diplo points per month which is a big deal since we need to catch up with our diplo generation of course plus we now can give the plus one mana generation for uh for the estates there you go one two and a three and we can give the patronage of the arts and everything else that comes alongside it since uh diplo advisor cost reduction again which means this guy is only 157 so we have a positive balance even now oh my god this is just juicy as private trade fleets for the extra ship trade power burger economic freedom but we're going to give this after we have positive otherwise it is going to be a debuff right now and not to worry about these uh debuffs here national tax gets uh ne negated by the plus that we're getting from the clergy and by uh, the burger financial demand which we just gave out as well then the uh absolutism doesn't matter because we are not in the 1600s to even have absolutism trigger autonomy doesn't matter since we pretty much only have one city and our capital city can never have more than zero autonomy the secondary city City doesn't really make any difference. I'm, I'm temporarily keeping this. And it's not like I'm relying on that city for anything anyway. And liberty desire from subjects. Again, we have no subjects. As such, it is absolutely irrelevant. Well, we managed to get 50 indulgence. So let's see who would like to uh, buy some of our indulgence. We can offer indulgence to Bremen, Lübeck, Ansbach, Anhalt, and Hamburg. Brandenburg too, maybe. What's the what's keeping them? Opinion. Let's improve the opinion. So the reason I want to sell this uh, indulgence to the to the biggest nation is because after I sell indulgence, this is what I get, right? I get three months worth of income. So I think uh, Riga's income is less than Brandenburg, but actually let's just check. Brandenburg's total income is 5.43. Oh, it's a, with the weird L. Oh, with the weird U. That's why I don't have that on my keyboard. All right, so I have to manually check for it. Lubeck is 5.04. Actually, it's almost the same. I don't need to wait. Let's just give indulgence to these guys. And I got in return 21 ducats. Not too much, as you can imagine. But um, the reality, I'm only selling this now so I can get my mission done after I've sold in indulgence five times don't necessarily care about the amount of money that i'm getting from these nations for the time being at least pay off that one loan now noise and we're back to 0 0.6 ducats amazing generating uh money generation right here we've also fixed our trade a little bit so we're transferring from novgorod and from uh krakow and we got 23 trade power in the baltic node where we're getting 2.09 ducats as consequence time to get our second tier government reform this is a no-brainer guys you want to go for the commercialized mission so we can get an extra merchant so we end up with four merchants
it's just realized I wasn't using all of them and that's very stupid on my side. Let's collect from here and let's also transfer more from Kiev, I guess. I don't really have too much of a pull around these areas, but it's fine. Better to have than not to have, right? Getting this set up actually gave us an extra 0.4 ducats, so it's better than nothing if you ask me, really. Another reform you could potentially go for is the mission on the high seas that offers sailors naval force limit and marines. Ability to recruit marines is pretty good. I think that's the one I went for last time I played as Riga. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn Ingermaland into a city-state. The way you do that is because of our government reform, we can do it. We can click trading city. We're going to name it to the greatest German name ever, Berlin. This is actually where Berlin was historically. Okay, shut up. And we're going to leave it as this because I'm too lazy to actually change it. There you go. Islamic Berlin looking thing. Okay, interesting. <laughs> and this is, of course, going to be in our trade league, which means we now have to get rid of one of our allies. That is going to be Miss you, Bremen. I don't need Bremen. If we improve with Oldenburg, Saxe, Lohenberg, and Dittmarschen, we might get them in the trade league. Are they not a part of the other trade league? They're not. Oh my god, this is not a... Oh my... This, this is juicy. This is actually juicy because these are trade cities. So we would get... Oh wait, actually Oldenburg's dog shit. How about you? Oh, they're both dog shit. East Frisia is the one I want, isn't it? Yes. That's in the English channel note though. But I'd say anything in this area is better since we're collecting from Lubeck as it is right now. Wait, what? Why are they... Oh, I fucked up. I forgot to add this to the to the whole holy roman empire before leaving before creating the trade city so now oh man oh that sucks dick oh it is what it is i'm gonna have to let them take it they wouldn't have attacked in german land or sorry berlin if it was a part of the hre that's for sure hey we got renaissance awesome all right let's adopt it for one dukatenstein nice all right so now we're up to date with everybody else when it comes to renaissance look at that 92 percent spread from all of the juicy modifiers we got here on report part of a state state capital provincial tax income peace positive stability and the uh, papal bull absolutely insane the amount of thread we have <laughs> the iberian wedding just triggered 57 that is so fast oh my god and we just gave uh, uh institution to the brandenburgians because we can do that now holy mother these guys got really lucky with the with the union and what the hell is going on here man what the hell man bulgaria is independent from the province of burgas constantinople is still around Genoa took parts of uh, the southern bits of uh, Greece together with Venice and Herzegovina won against Bosnia. This is the cursed timeline. This is the actual cursed timeline right here. <laughs> oh my god, what the hell, brother? And the English are doing the weirdest expansion ever in the freaking Irish lands. Why would you take provinces right next to yours when you can just randomly take provinces on the other side of the island, right? Let's also build up the marketplace in Riga. We need to have a marketplace, a uh, temple or cathedral, a fort which we have already and uh workshop i believe in order to do the juicy mission develop our city yes workshop and barracks okay so we need to work a little bit more on this we need to get military and admin tech five the teutons just made us their rivals i'm not sure how that's even possible they're like literally 10 times the size of us so interesting interesting to say the least i'm gonna send them a scornful insult to just uh measure peepees over here see if they got the balls to attack me which they don't clearly they're gonna get their balls cut down in two years by the Poles. Speaking of, I started improving with them just in case. And it's here, the Doom of Valeria, or in this case, the Teutons, <laughs> is uh, is called the Danzig. Now, Danzig is going to get its uh, support and alliance with the Poles, and then the, the Teutons have to fight Poland, Lithuania, and Moldova, and they're going to be schnappled. Can they fully annex them in one war? That's the real question. They can. Oh, that's bad. That means they're likely going to fully annex them. I was hoping I can do either a humiliation war or something so I can get something out of that, but yeah. Wait, Livonia is at war as well. <gasps> oh, that is really good for me. Maybe they break the alliance that the Livonians have with the Muscovites. By the way, that was one of the worst RNGs imaginable. But yeah, it did happen, unfortunately. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, pay, I'm gonna pay really close attention to this particular war. That's for sure. The plot has thickened, boyos. Shall we deal with our nobles by inviting them to a a, a, a the gala dinner and then arresting everyone? I think we should. There you go. Get out of here, boys. How dare you cause trouble in my beloved holy land of? Riga. Okay, I can now get an alliance with the with the Poles because I've been improving with them like crazy. And I think I might also be able to give them knowledge sharing. They have loans though. Oh wow. Okay, let's see 
see who we can give knowledge sharing to because uh, Brandenburg just uh, just uh, finished their uh, their knowledge sharing that they had with us. These guys might accept. They have a neutral ad attitude towards us, though. So if we improve relations with them a little bit, they uh, they would like knowledge sharing from us. And they are a pretty sizable nation, so they should be giving us quite a little bit of ducats in return. Puskov, not really worth it. These guys, eh, not really worth it. Yeah, I think I'm going to just uh, push for the Swedes, I guess. This actually turned into a much bigger conflict because the Danes are helping out the Teutons now. So I could potentially attack the Livonians since the Muscovites are not interested in keeping the alliance with them anymore. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit more though because they still have the Condotieri from Muscovy. So they still have a pretty sizable army. I'm going to start paying for my units, however, so that uh, when the time arrives, I can attack and get the Humiliation and get the 300 mana points as consequence afterwards. I'm not going to subjugate them, not just yet. I'll wait until they're a little bit smaller. I, I, I don't want to have to deal with the mass of Livonians as a one province, 18 development uh, nation. I can do it when I'm 45 development in a few years after I get the uh, mission done, right? And that right there is my cue. Muscovy is no longer renting out Condotieri to Livonians, which also have no more units. So let's uh, bring this guy back over here and attack. Yes, Maximus. It is just the Livonians against us, so it's fairly easy. And we can essentially get afterwards the show of strength, which offers 100 of each mana points alongside some power projection. So we're going to get plus one man monthly mana from power projection being over 50 and another 300 mana. So we're going to be swimming in mana points, which makes up for this guy being 70 and not yet dead. Something that really pisses the shit out of me. But it is like that, unfortunately, in EU4. Sometimes RNG really kicks you in the balls hard. Kicks you very, very hard in the balls. These guys have loans as well. Oh my god, can you people stop having loans and buy my renaissance? <laughs> nice attempt at rebuilding your forces, Livonians, but we cannot allow that. I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to um, be my little schnippedoms. That's your whole role, okay? You can only do that. That's the only thing you can do in this particular place. You don't know what that is. Clearly, you're not educated enough. Or how come you don't know what a schnippedop is, huh? What, you think I just invent these words? Is that what you think is happening here? If I, maybe I did invent it, but you should still know it, okay? That right there is quite literally my mom's logic. My mom used to be like, like, oh, can you get me that from over there? And I would ask, like, what from over where? And she's like, that from over there. Oh my god, you don't know anything. <laughs> what? Seriously, that's that, right there. That's an actual conversation between me and my mom back in the day. Back in the days, boys. All right, let's offer indulgence to the Poles, which gave us 60 Dukatenstein, not bad at all. And the war is over. It looks like the, the Teutons did not get fully annexed. Would they get help from these guys? They would not act. They would not get help from them, and we could call in our three allies, which could could potentially take care of Gotland and Mecklenburg. Do they have any units? I don't think they have any units left, do they? No. You know what? Let's do it. That is the equivalent of 600 mana points right there. But because we're using Humiliation, we cannot take any provinces. So I'm not going to co-belligerate the Gotland in that case. Balls deep into this particular situation. I'm also not clicking this mission for another ulterior reason. That is because if um, both of these nations don't exist, or if they are subjects of another nation instead of Subjugation CB, I get core on all their provinces. So that's a lot better than getting those cores. You know what I mean? In case we do decide to play wide after we play tall, okay? Just saying, it's it's just in case. Can you imagine if I got as my third tier reform, the average lifespan? The guy that's already 70 what? 73 would be even older. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I'm gonna go for the advisor cost. Appreciate it though. I think we managed to capture quite a few ships in this war as well. That's gonna be very, very beneficial for us. All right, now let's go into the south. Thank you very much. Get into, um, Teutonic lands for that matter. Do we have any more ships we can destroy in the in the process? Oh, and we can peace out Mecklenburg actually. Give me your money. Give me your trade power and your war reparations, boy. And cancel that so I get a little bit more prestige. How much of that did go to me? 1.5. I'm okay with it because I didn't do much, so it's fine. Brandenburg did pretty much the entirety of the heavy lifting in that particular engagement. Totally unexpected. The Muscovites just attacked Livonian. It's almost as if um them canceling that alliance with the Livonians was uh, a foreshadowing to this isn't it? Almost, really. Not not 100%, of course. Clearly. Not. Now, I'm struggling here because these guys have 4,000 units and I only have two ships that I can transfer, that I can uh, land with. So, that's definitely going to be a little bit of an issue. I'm going to have to wait out until Gotland's willing to piece me out with the white piece here. So, that's going to be a few months from now. Alright, we got Admin Tech 6, so we can build up the rest of the buildings that we need. We just need to uh, also use 50 Admin to expand infrastructure beforehand. So, we're going to wait a little while. We're going to be developing our Diplo points too since we have the agenda and it's going to expire in 69 we don't want it to expire now do we also i'm going to give out the uh, papal emissary so i get the plus one papal influence monthly which means we're going to be getting 7.62 papal influence we can get another one from here but i'm going to wait until 
I build a few more build actually you know what screw it I'll do it now and now we're getting 11.45 papal influence which is a huge freaking amount by comparison and the Livonia's got fully annexed <laughs> that's totally not scary being surrounded by one of the greatest freaking nations around us oh my god <laughs> oh my god <laughs> thanks Schnippeldorp that we are a part of the HRE otherwise we would be toast right now compared to the 30,000 they can field but check it out every province of the Livonian order in uh, Coronia, Estonia, Livonia becomes a core of Riga now that uh, the Livonians don't exist anymore. Like I was saying before, we get cores if we cannot subjugate them because they don't exist anymore. Same goes for these guys. If they're gone, we get cores on all of this. So we could potentially do a Riga into Prussia run by taking all these provinces, right? Also, it looks like we can do that white piece now. So we can do the piece with the Teutons uh, right after. There you go. Show us strength. Another 300 mana points in the bag and we got 80 power projection which is even better i love me some power projection okay go ahead and do this as well now we have the barracks so we have all the buildings that we need here let's go ahead and uh, expand infrastructure once that means we can build up next the uh workshop so clickiest maximus workshop because make sure we have the uh encouraged development edict set up as well so 37 to develop this province is absolutely nothing let's face it so let's use up some mana points and uh, develop this province now we went up to 27 development and we can still do it even more we're gonna wait a while though before we do another dev session let's go ahead and offer indulgence to the english which gave us a hundred ducats okay we're ramping up boys we're definitely ramping up we got all the buildings required to do the mission so now check it out boys clickius maximus and look at all the stuff we got oh my god <laughs> This is just insane, dude. We got local development cost, yearly tax income plus 60. So let's check our tax income. We got 16 ducats for land. Now, once we get more taxation efficiency, we will be getting that 60 flat. So we're right now getting a 20.51 ducats profit with literally one province. We got more profit than the Muscovites have. We, in fact, have more total income than most of the nations in Europe with one freaking province. Let's go ahead and expand infrastructure here a few more times as well because uh we're gonna keep on developing this little schnapple dupe of a province let's uh let's bring it up to as much as we possibly can let's make uh let's make this province insanely overpowered shall we we got byzantine refugees hell yeah let them come in let them all get in look at that boys look at that man this is just delicious <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna build every building I can build as well, of course. And let's get the uh, golden era started. So it's even cheaper to develop provinces. 130 to develop a province that is 46 development with basically no ideas towards this. It's just insane to me, man. So once we get the uh, development efficiency and the ideas and everything, it's gonna be back to like 60, 50 to develop with like 50 development in this province already. We developed it 35 times. That is just disgusting, my dude. Actually freaking disgusting. We went up to 23 freaking income, 30 total income. What the hell, man? <laughs> Okay, that is just amazing. And look at that. 30 up to 30 land force limit and up to 37 naval force limit. So we're going to spam the shit out of both our troops and our ships and show you how insanely powerful we can be as just one little insignificant province. This right here is exactly why Riga is the best province in the game, if you ask. And right now we can make the Muscovites our rival. So the AI, the, the game considers that us with one province is equal to Muscovy, which is half of freaking Europe. Let that just sink in for a moment let me also get my naval doctrine which i should have gotten a while back i actually kind of forgot about it and let's start getting into the plutocratic ideas i personally prefer plutocratic first as riga because we're staying small and this idea set offers us one extra merchant dev cost reduction goods produce modifier monthly reform progress cheaper mercenaries and provincial trade power modifier so it scales up so massively with our province because check it out our province already has 91 trade power trade value 21 goods produced and manpower of 15,000 sailors 15,000 it is just ridiculous what we're getting at Ariga. so going for that particular idea group even triples our greatness if you ask me right all right seems like we got a very standard Burgundian inheritance with the uh, Austrian Emperor taking over most of Burgundy let's see if they give the French their bits or if they're gonna go to war for it now as our second idea set it's a little bit more complicated trade ideas would be absolutely amazing because again it doubles 
doubles down on our trade ability offers two extra merchants right as well as all that extra trade efficiency trade power and so on but then infrastructure is also really good because it allows us to develop a little bit quicker i am going to go for trade but i will definitely keep infrastructure in my heart that is for sure uh we can also summon the diet again and go for whichever agenda best suits us plus we can become a defender of the faith if we wanted to i don't want to i'm keeping my money so i can actually upgrade this to a level three center of trade which is going to be very fast since we're now generating 30 ducats per month even though we went up to 20,000 units we're going to keep on recruiting more units actually we're going to go up to 24 and then we're going to get some artillery pieces in a little while once we have uh, actually gotten military tech 7 oops almost forgot to do it there we go that boosts us up to 131 trade power in here also don't want to go below 50 um power projection so i'm going to insult these guys and i'm also going to embargo them which should actually impact them quite a little bit because they got uh, a share of the baltic node which we have 43 percent of with the one freaking province we basically have almost half of this freaking uh, my bad after refreshing with the central trade level three we have 48 so we do have half of the trade node which is this many provinces with the just the one a province oh my god dude <laughs> I'm loving Riga so much right now. And if you're wondering how hard is it to conquer Riga, it's pretty freaking impossible. Because we just built a rampart that offers attrition for enemy plus one, defensiveness, and dice roll for us plus one. We also have minus one dice roll for the attacker from being woods. And it's essentially 81% defensiveness right now with the level three fortification and woods. It is just great, man. We can also expand infrastructure one more time, bringing us down to uh, 18, 118 without even the uh, encouraged development edict here and without any actual ideas for lowering the development cost that is just mind-blowing to me really and we just passed 50 percent now we got 52 percent of the node with one province i know it sounds like i'm flexing a lot here but i'm just really happy to see that you know because with one little province we're doing so much freaking damage right now when we started recruiting our artillery so we're gonna get 6,000 artillery 20,000 infantry 4,000 cav for now which is one decent army to take on the russians in my opinion which also have 38,000 so almost about the same amount as we have right now plus what's more we can build our flagship so it's going to be a light ship of course it's going to have trade power per ship and fleet plus one fleet movement speed plus one as well and privateering efficiency as always it is essentially a standard trade flagship let's give it a proper name here as well this is a uh, historical flagship name for the uh for the regan flagships it's uh suck on these bolts you know because they were baltic people <laughs> and because uh, the Teutons are no more, we now get cores on every single province around here. Look at this. Cores, 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 ha, 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 cores everywhere. If that's not juicy, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't even know what juicy is if that's not juicy, if you ask. That does mean we're losing a lot of prestige now. Unpause, and there you go. Three on the minus because of uncontested cores. Remember, for every core that you have uncontested, you lose 0.1 prestige, if I'm not mistaken, right? So we have 16 cores around that we need to eventually get if we decide to start playing tall i don't really know what to do with all my fortune so i'm just gonna go defender of the faith not because i want to not because i need to but i just have too much money you know and i don't know what to, i built up all the stuff i could build for now and let's check how this is impacting this we're getting how many we're getting 6.44 wait what oh it's because my clergy is screwed over isn't it yes need to wait for these guys to get above 30 loyal that's gonna fix this massively we can once more sell uh, indulgence and that's a hundred from the poles which means that we can now do the sell of indulgence mission that offers permanent plus one papal influence and loyalty for the equilibrium i mean loyalty for the equilibrium loyalty for the clergy loyalty for the equilibrium isn't that like a movie equilibrium <laughs> with sean bean like a really old one a lot of these downwards missions here are going to be done a little bit later like we need to have protestantism enabled for this one here and then for this one we need to have 20 mercenaries for this one we need to have trade income at 50 percent, which is going to be hard to do considering that we have a lot of tax income right now we also need to uh re-establish our trade league and get um 75 relations with every trade league member of uh, lubex league that's actually not hard to do then we can get eventually trade efficiency and global trade plus 25 percent until the end of the game holy shit that's so powerful like, holy fuck yeah that essentially means that riga is by far the strongest trade nation as well even as small as it might be here you know what just for the memes let's uh let's keep on developing it let's get it up there let's dev it up let's dev the schnippeldorp out of it we got 53 development in here oh my god dude that is disgusting <laughs> 
We got 110% fort defense now. What? Holy shit. Oh yeah, I forgot. Expanded infrastructure also gives fort defensiveness. My god. And morale of the defenders is what we got here. And ramparts and everything else. So despite having uh, a lot of ships and a lot of army, we're still making 24 profit. That is just disgusting. Ab actually disgusting. And let's send the ship to the Baltic Sea. So now let's see how much trade we get after this ship merges with the rest of the, the fl fleet. So now we're up to 60 freaking percent, man. 11 ducats from trade because of it now. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this run. I had a lot of fun to show you why Riga is the best province in the world, in at least the EU4 world. Also, don't forget to subscribe, leave that like to see the Teutonic run, and until the next time, check out this awesome Brandenburg video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.